What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Drunk Fish Keeping. That is refreshing. So tonight's beverage of choice is going to be the Elijah Craig Cast Strength. Um, it's one of my favorite bourbons. The Elijah Craig, normally, uh, it's a 94 proof, 12 year age small batch bourbon. It's very delicious. Um, this happens to be their cast strength that they release every so often as they, you know, make it. Um, it's very good, amazing flavor. It is strong, it's 112, anywhere from 110 to 115 proof. So, you know, it's a sipper. You don't want to chug this stuff, but it is very good for, you know, your Sunday relaxing, having some on the TV, working on your fish tanks, having a sipper of bourbon. It's amazing, beautiful. Definitely recommend it, but it's definitely a non-mixer. This is definitely one of the ones you want to put a little bit of ice in or whiskey stone, touch of water, and, and let it mellow and really enjoy the flavor of it. Now, to get you guys on what's been going on with the tanks, um, I know I haven't done a video in a while and we have been insanely busy. We moved, we got the tanks up. You know, last video was just showing you guys the tank after we moved it. Um, the new fish room, as you can see, um, actually a little bit bigger than the old fish room. Um, you know, the 120 kind of takes dominance of this fish room. Um, the M190 is over here. Um, it is right off the edge of the kitchen, which is kind of where we thought would be a good spot for it. Uh, a couple things on the 120. So, to get started, and as you can see, definitely changed the rock work up. Um, definitely a lot more arches and free space for the fish to swim. That is because I've gotten a little tang heavy. Um, part of which I have a Tamini Flame Fin, I have a Mimic Half Black, and I have a Desjardini Cell Fin in here now, all of which are medium body length fish. Uh, my newest addition come right up here. Now he is a Blue Side Fairy Race. Yeah, Rass. It's a race. A Rass. A race. No, it's a Blue Side Fairy Rass. Um, really pretty fish. Really, really pretty. Uh, magenta purple face to back, light blue with a little bit of yellow on the underbody, very pretty fish. Um, it's a fairy wrasse, so I mean, you can kind of get the in general picture of them. They're not a flasher, but they're still a very pretty fish. Um, you know, have been really working on the 120s to get it back and swing. Um, nothing too crazy on it. As you can see, I've got two torches up here. This one's bleaching. I've moved it. I might have to move it again and put a little bit less light just to let it come back. It is not liking the move. They were both doing good. Uh, Duncan and Blasto, you know, the uh, Weeping Willow is doing okay. It's down. Uh, it's getting closer to nighttime for it. And then, you know, GSP is, of course, doing as it should. So, yeah, happy. Not going to complain. But I'm gonna take you guys over to the M90 because that is what's been really getting worked on here lately. The M90's gotten a complete overhaul. Um, rock has been changed on the M90. Fish load has been modified and added to. Uh, and a couple of things just in general on the M90 that has made this tank really, really pop and make it to where we are super happy with it. So first off, we're gonna do the rock. Now I'm gonna show you guys kind of a side by and then kind of get up close on it but as you can see they've got some of the nice arch work rock going on here um and super duper cool pieces of rock uh, stuff that really in my opinion makes this tank just just pop now sorry the glass is a little dirty doing a lot of tank maintenance today um this tank is actually starting to hit its um it's max for fish. So what we have in there right now is we have a uh, two clowns, you got a frostbite and a black onyx. You have two purple firefish, which one, there's one, there's two, there's clownfish. You have our Scopus, who's very much juvenile. He's not much bigger than a quarter. Um, you have two, uh, two red shrimp, you know, aptage eating shrimp. Plus your corals, we have mushrooms, blastos, the weeping willow, the elegance in the corner. Um, the tank, I think, as far as its bio load for fish is done. Uh, probably gonna add a few more corals um, as they come up, things that look good. 
Probably going to swap the Elegance out because this thing is a humongous Elegance. It's a little bit big for the tank. It would be a little more appropriate in a larger tank. Um, you know, but it's pretty, so we might swap out for a smaller Elegance. The one thing we've noticed on the M90 um, is your back here. Now, Fluval puts this at a, about a 720 gallon per hour pump on the back side. Um, it's not enough. It's not. So if you buy this tank, unless you're just running a very small bio load, like, you know, coral and some inverts with like one or two fish, like some clowns or some small firefish, uh, you may be okay, but if you're going to run anything else, really, really, really want to just go ahead and increase that because you get a lot of dead zone back here which allows for a lot of films, a lot of oils to build up, a lot of algae build up. So, yeah, gonna, gonna swap that up. Um, another thing too, the prime. Um, we're putting the prime on it, noticing the prime is just not quite enough for the spread. Probably gonna end up swapping this out with a Hyder 26 just because it's got some dead zone. I mean, you got a little bit of light dead zone here and you got some light dead zone definitely over here. As you can tell, it's, it's much darker. Um, as this tank grows, it's going to need as much light as possible, so it's going to have to get kicked up. Now, I'm not knocking the Prime. I like the Prime. It's a great light. The Prime's going to do good for your tall, like your bio cubes, your uh, more tall fluvals, you know, a, a traditional 30 gallon, you know, a 50, the 54 corner did great in because the 54 corner had a lot more center space with as much length spread. That's the problem with this. It's a length spread. It's it's a lot of length. You're talking a 36 inch long tank. You're talking almost 20 inches deep. You're talking, you know, 15 and a half, 16 inches tall. So the depth, not a big problem. It's, you know, we're talking about 16 and a half inches of actual tank space. You know, you've got a good four inch pocket in the back for all your filtration, but it's the length that really, I think, kicks the prime. So it's probably why we're going to do a Hyder 26. Now, I know you guys heard me say Scopus, and you're thinking, oh my God, why would you put a Scopus in a 36 gallon tank? Two reasons. One, these tanks are actually pretty spacious for what they are, and two, this thing is literally just a hair bigger than a quarter. It is very much juvenile. Um, and my girlfriend absolutely loves the Scopus. She loves Scopus tanks. They are cute little guys and this one if he will come out hopefully and then you guys can see him there he is he's hiding he is so tiny he is absolutely tiny now the reason why we got him obviously is because there's a 120 gallon tank over here in the corner so once that scopus reaches his point where he is too big for the tank we'll put him in the 120 and he's got some room and he'll have some other tanks in there and granted i may sell the tamini I may sell, you know, the half black. Actually, honestly, I'm probably going to keep the Desjardinian Tamini or the Desjardinian half black because I love them. The Tamini, I'm kind of on the fence on because I want to swap out and almost do a lavender tang. But I got someone who won't say, you know, five inch long Tamini flame fin. Because they are a tang that some people love, some people aren't the biggest fan of. But hey, there we go. But to do one more for you guys, just so you can see everything. And the Desjardini is hiding. He's definitely hiding. Um, there's my flame fin. Here's my Melanuris. There's the half black. It's gonna hang this out here so you guys can see it for a minute. You know, there's the Desjardini hanging out in the back, and the flame fin over here. He does not like the camera. He does not like the powder blue. He does not like the camera. He is a bit shy. So I'm probably going to try to set up something one night for you guys to where I can literally put a you know, camera here for a little while and you can see everything move around and see how the fish interact. But at the end of the day, this is, you know, this is what the hobby is. It's fun. It's, it's good to do. Um, I'm going to do a video. I might probably actually do two postings tonight because this video is getting a little bit long, but I'm probably going to do another one on just how to do um, certain things because... I've got some questions. I've had people in the hobby ask me, like, what, do you, what is it that keeps you going in the hobby? Um, which, you know, with the expenses to get, it, it can be a bit of a, a bear. So I'll probably do that video here in a minute just so I can do two so people can see both sides of things, um, the fish side and then just, like, the thought side. So, again, guys, appreciate it. 
Adventures in Direct Fish Keeping. If you like the video, please put a like. Um, if you got any questions, comments, put them down below. Answer anything you guys got. Um, so, hit them up.